children and welcome to another Sunday School. Now for most of you, you've been on half term this week, which means you haven't had to do much homeschooling. So you must be really excited to uh, start Sunday School this week and learn more about uh, what the Bible has to tell us and more about Jesus. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. I hope you've got your Bibles with you because I think we've got a sword drill again this week. So we're going to continue uh, learning more about Joseph and we're coming almost to the end of the series on Joseph. But we've got one of the most important lessons to learn this week. And this lesson might be just for you. This lesson might transform your whole life. So I want you to be prepared to listen and concentrate because this lesson is just for you. But before we get into Sunday School, Let's turn to the Lord in prayer and let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. This week's story is all about forgiveness. Joseph has had some terrible things happen to him. His brothers threw him into the pit and sold him as a slave. Well, this week in our story, his brothers are put to a test to see if they're really sorry for the things that they had done to Joseph. Now, it's no coincidence that forgiveness appears right in the centre of our Lord's Prayer that we've just prayed. Because forgiveness is right at the heart of the Bible. The whole Bible is about forgiveness and how our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ came to earth and died on that cross. So as we learn our lesson this week, perhaps you can think about how you could seek forgiveness, how you could Ask Jesus to forgive you for all the wrong things you've done. That would be a great lesson to learn. So let's sing our first song, which is a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Because Jesus showed his love by dying on the cross so that forgiveness could happen. So let's sing this through twice. So before we have our Bible reading, let's just have a quick recap of our story of Joseph so far. So we, found, we, we know that Joseph was thrown into a pit and sold to slaves and ended up in Egypt. And then he was thrown into prison. And then he was interpreting dreams for the butler and the baker, wasn't he? Well, in the last few lessons, we've learned how God gave Joseph the wisdom to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. And you can remember what the dreams were about? 
the seven years of famine that's right so we know that Joseph was able to interpret those dreams but then be put in charge of the whole land he was like the Prime Minister he was a bit like Boris Johnson at the moment leading the country through a difficult period now Boris Johnson has got some very difficult decisions to make hasn't he with the the roadmap and the pandemic well Joseph he had some difficult decisions to make the country of Egypt had seven years of bumper harvests and perhaps he had to order people about to collect the grain and they perhaps wondered what is this Joseph telling us to do why is he telling us to do this this is strange we've got lots of grain why do we need to store some we've got our fields are full well after the seven years of bumper harvest there were seven years of famine wasn't there so Joseph with God's wisdom and God's help was able to feed the whole of Egypt and also some of the surrounding lands well Joseph's brothers they soon started running out of food didn't they so they had to go to Egypt with some money and ask the leader of of the country for grain well they didn't know it was Joseph did they and they bowed down to him as a leader of the country well that was Joseph's dream coming true well Joseph eventually gave his brothers some grain didn't he and sent them home but he didn't send them all home he held back Simeon and said when you when you run out of food you need to come back with Benjamin the youngest brother and that's what he commanded them to do so he sent them away but he didn't just send them away with sacks full of grain he also put their money into their sacks whatever could this mean why did Joseph show his brother's kindness well let's read our Bible reading to find out what happens next and then we'll go into our lesson so I hope you've got your Bibles with you ready to to read God's Word now today's reading can be found in Genesis and chapter 43 and we'll read from verse 15 to the end of the chapter now we pick up the reading this week uh, as Jacob has sent his sons back to Egypt because they've run out of food and this time he sent them with double the amount of money because he didn't want uh, the brothers to be uh, locked up with Simeon so he sent them with double the amount of money and some uh, gifts of, of fruit and figs so let's read God's word together and let's see what happens Genesis chapter 43 verse 15 and the men took that present and they took double money in their hand and Benjamin and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph and when Joseph saw Benjamin with them he said to the ruler of his house bring these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon and the man did as Joseph bade and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid, because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, Because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us, and fall upon us, and take us for bondmen and our asses. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house, and said, O oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. And it came to pass, when we came to the inn, that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, Peace be to you, fear not. Your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house, and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their hand into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare, and said, 
Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health, he is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes, and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother, of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber, and wept there. And he washed his face, and went out, and refrained himself, and said, Set on bread. And they set on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians, which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marvelled one at another. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him. But Benjamin's mess was five times as much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. Thank you to the Grey Girls for bringing our Bible reading to us this week. Our teacher for our lesson this week is Mr David Stanley. Now I know you're all really excited to hear from David and as he brings our lesson to us. Now let's look out for forgiveness and also Jesus in our lesson. And we were asked by Stephen last week to see how many times we could see Jesus. Well, I think this week we'll see a lot uh, of, of references to Jesus because our lesson is mostly focused on forgiveness. So let's settle down and let's hear from David. Hello everyone, it's so good to see you back at Sunday School again. I trust you're all keeping well. We are all praying for you that God will be with you at this hard time. I trust you're all keeping well studying at home. It can be very hard, but I trust God is blessing you and helping you. We look forward to the day when we'll be able to meet back in the chapel and share with you in person the wonderful stories, the true accounts from the Bible. But it's a blessing we're able to join online and watch about the life of Joseph and pick up our lesson. Well, I've got some fascinating things to tell you from the life of Joseph. Did you know Joseph probably would have seen the pyramids in Egypt? Perhaps you've learned about the pyramids in Egypt where the Egyptians used to bury their king pharaohs, many of them in these big tombs called pyramids. These in this picture are the great pyramids of Giza and they were built 4,500 years ago. That's what the historians calculate and tell us. Joseph almost certainly would have seen these pyramids. They were built approximately 700 years before he came to power. So that's so amazing that these real events happened that Joseph would have seen, like we can see on the internet, that Joseph would have seen in person but did you know it's more wonderful, not just learning that the life of Joseph was true history and he was in this very powerful and interesting culture of the Egyptians, though it was very ungodly, but God teaches us through his word. Can you see that word I've underlined in purple in that, from that psalm? Because the Bible speaks a lot about the, why the life of Joseph is there. What's the reason for it? What's that word beginning with P or P? Well, it's parable. And did you know the life of Joseph is a parable that points to the life of Jesus, that shows us what the Lord Jesus would be like? We, perhaps you might be seeing thinking, well, the parables were just the stories Jesus told. Well, that in so many ways is true. Perhaps you can think of a uh, wise and foolish builder from Matthew chapter 7, or the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son from Luke chapter 15. Or the many parables in Matthew chapter 13 about the, who, about the farmer who went to sow. And other parables, the rich fool from Luke chapter 12. And perhaps you've learned about many of these wonderful stories Jesus told with heavenly meanings that we might ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness of our sins. But did you know the lives of people in the Old Testament are parables to point us to the Lord Jesus Christ? Those stories tell us about many people who provided good things, like God provides good things to us and saves people. Well, let's go back to our story. The brothers of Joseph met Joseph, though they don't know it's him, and Joseph's been actually very kind to him, them. 
they've given all the brothers free food, as it were. They go to Egypt, and they get their corn bags filled up, and their money plays back. Imagine if you went to the supermarket and could take everything in the supermarket for free. Now, we can't do that, and we shouldn't do that. That would be stealing. But imagine if someone paid for all your food. That would be wonderful. Joseph was so kind. But Joseph put on a strict face, perhaps like your parents do sometimes. And Joseph wouldn't tell his brothers who he was at first because he wanted to see whether they were truly forgiven and truly um, sorry for what they had done to him in selling him as a slave. And he locked Simeon up to in prison to make sure that they would come back and to test whether they were truly sorry or whether they didn't care about one of their brothers in prison. Well, they also Joseph says they also have to bring back their younger brother Benjamin. That's a real test of whether Jacob would let them bring back Benjamin. But eventually the corn bags run out of food and they can't turn that corn, that wheat grain, into bread. And eventually they've got no wheat left to make bread. And eventually they've got empty plates, no bread, no cake. They're starting to get hungry or about to get hungry. And they must go to Egypt. Perhaps they miss their brother Simeon in prison too. And they're starting to think, well, maybe what this was like it was for Joseph when he was sold as a slave. But there was one problem, one real reason, probably many reasons, but this was probably the most important reason why they couldn't go to Egypt. It was because of this brother Judah, and this is very sad. We can read in the Bible, and we, we know that Jacob would have known about how bad Judah was. And Jacob could see this through the birth of his um, grandchildren. And it's very sad what happened to Joseph, how he abused his daughter-in-law so terribly. And Jacob would have known this. But Jacob wouldn't have known how terrible Judah was in selling Joseph as a slave. How terrible. But Jacob wouldn't have trusted Judah. And Judah had to truly show he could be trusted and he could take Benjamin down to Egypt. No doubt Jacob would have been afraid that Benjamin would have gone missing under uh, unknown circumstances, as it were. Um, like Joseph, like the brothers had lied about Joseph earlier on. But eventually Judah was sorry and he promises very strongly to Jacob that he would be he would treat Benjamin and the whole of his brothers very well. And eventually Jacob lets them take their younger brother Benjamin back down to Egypt. Now I want to ask you, what are you like? Is your family loving and kind like this picture? Or perhaps not just in the pictures, but when people don't see you, when you're all alone, when your parents are busy doing jobs, what are you like to your brothers and sisters? Are you kind like these two brothers? Or perhaps kind to your sisters and treat them lovingly and kindly? like the Lord Jesus Christ would. You know, we all need the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us our sins because we so often treat those nearest and dearest to us so awfully. And we must try and tell our brothers and sisters we have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness and we must win them back, win back their love and win back their parents and be kind to them and show we are truly, um, truly uh, forgiven and that the, the Lord Jesus Christ has changed us. So eventually Jacob gives permission for Judah to go down to Egypt. And Jacob is wise. He knows that this man, this ruler, who they don't know as Joseph, has been quite strict. So Jacob sends some gifts to be kind to him, to open up his heart. And that's what we should do to perhaps those who are strict to us and perhaps we are struggling with. We should be kind to them. So Joseph sends some honey. Jo Jacob sends this ruler, who is Joseph, some honey. How lovely. Perhaps you like honey, perhaps you have it as a special treat. And some myrrh, some very expensive resin. This is, uh, it comes out of trees. You drill it out of a tree, certain trees, the myrrh tree. And then it becomes a solid. Perhaps you learnt about it in science, about liquids and solids. This is solid myrrh. It's not sweets, it's a perfume. And some expensive nuts. And also the money, in case a mistake has been made, the money back in their sacks. And then he knows Joseph is strict, this man who... They don't know his Joseph is strict. So he says that they must pay for the last food and the food this time. And they must bring double just in case to be kind. So all of those ten brothers. So that's excluding Joseph who's ruler in Egypt. And Simeon who's locked down. Take three lots of money each. That's 30 lots of money. 
how good God was in protecting them and keeping them and keeping them safe on that long journey to Egypt that they didn't get robbed or anything like that. But maybe this was the reason why God was so kind to them. It's because before they went, Jacob called them together and prayed. You know, Jacob had many faults. He wasn't a perfect father, but he prayed with his children. And did you know, it's a great privilege if you ask your parents to pray with you. Perhaps many of you aren't going to school at the minute, but when you go back to school, perhaps in a few weeks, you should pray that God would bless you and keep you as you go out to school. And when you come in, and thank God that he has kept you safe each day as you journey, as you cross the road, as you walk to school, go in a car. And God was so good in keeping Jacob, Joseph's brothers safe on the way to Egypt. Well, they come with their money back to Egypt and something strange happens. This strict, the kind ruler, invites them in for lunch. How wonderful. Free lunch. I bet those brothers, big brothers, I'm sure, were well, those hungry brothers too, were well, delighted. We read in the Bible that Joseph gives them bread. Yes, they probably were amazed at the kindness of this person. And maybe it made them think how they treated Joseph in the past. They weren't kind. Joseph was their brother, but this man, who they didn't know was Joseph, to them was a stranger, was treating them so kind. Then something strange happens. This man, this ruler, who they don't know it's Joseph, sits them down in age order when he starts at Reuben. And he brings Simeon out of prison and sits Simeon next to Reuben, and then Levi, and then Judah, and then all the other sons down to Benjamin. And he gives them out an equal portion of food, a lovely big portion. And then he gives Benjamin three times as much, because Benjamin is his true brother. You see, all the other brothers were sadly stepbrothers because of Jacob's unfaithfulness with other women. And that caused so much sadness in that family, so much split. But Joseph was so kind to each of the brothers. And they began to be quite scared and quite amazed. It made them think. And it started their consciences thinking. And perhaps you have come to church, or perhaps when you come to first hear of the Lord God, people are so kind to you. And you hear about the goodness of God and the kindness and how he gives you food every day, and gives you strength and energy. And then you see God's order in creation, how he's made you your hands and made you healthy, and made the trees so beautiful, and the flowers, and every springtime, we see the flowers about to come up, and then the summer and the winter, and all this order. Well, it's very strange, isn't it? This can't come out by accident. There must be a God. And the fact that Joseph sat his brothers in order must have made them realise that this man who they didn't know was Joseph was a ruler at least, was a very important man, was almost certainly at least a prophet. And it made them think that God could see everything. You know, perhaps it's so important to ask the Lord Jesus to be our saviour, that on our journey to know Jesus Christ as our saviour, we have to realise that God knows everything. We sometimes say, God is omniscient. That's a big word. You might hear about that later. So save that in your brain. And we have to remember God sees all the good and the bad. And perhaps Joseph's brothers, particularly Judah, thought back to the time when God saw him suggest to sell his brother to slavery. Well, let's hurry on in our story. Joseph is so good. He gives loads up them with corn right to the top of their bags. Then without them realising, he fills them up. And puts all that, those three lots of money in those bags, those 30 lots for each of those 10 brothers, they go back. And they leave that city in Egypt, but, and it's with the money in. But as soon as they've gone, Joseph's servants come chasing after them very quickly. You see, Joseph's royal cup is missing. It's probably an indication that he was the prime minister. This had been placed in one of the brothers' bags. And it's in Benjamin's bag. And it looks as if the cup has been stolen. And Benjamin, well, it's very sad. He might be in serious trouble. Very, very serious trouble. And it's making them think. They're terrified. 
what will happen to Benjamin? You see, Benjamin hadn't stolen it. It had been placed there for another reason, to test the brothers. But God had worked it out that it would be in Benjamin's sack. And what's going to happen to Benjamin? Well, they fear he might die. Perhaps he might have his head chopped off. And that makes Judah think about all his sin he's done in the past. And Judah rushes back with all his brothers to that city to find Joseph. And he realises Benjamin hasn't done anything wrong, that something has happened, perhaps an accident they think has happened, that this cup, but he realises that Benjamin, because it's in his bag, and he probably should have checked his bags before he went, is some way, is re maybe responsible, or at least he is in line for punishment. Benjamin might die. So Judah, they go back to the city in Egypt, perhaps past the pyramids, or perhaps they hadn't even got to the pyramids. And Judah says to Joseph, he pleads with him, he says, I'll go to prison. He, could say, he, sees, he says, I'm willing to be a slave, Joseph, all my life, but Benjamin would go free. You see how Judah has changed. Judah in the time past would sell Joseph. He suggested it. But this time he's willing to let his brother go free and put himself at risk. And he's, you see, what a change, what a turnaround. Now the Bible doesn't tell us what happened to Joe, Judah, whether he asked the Lord God to forgive him, or whether it was just a love for his brother that had been restored. But the most important thing is that we love our brothers and sisters. But more importantly than that, the most, most important thing is that we ask the Lord God to forgive us our sins. Because Joseph is like a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have, the Lord Jesus Christ is so kind. He's like a brother to us. He's made the world. He's there with us all the time, though we don't realise it. And we have treated him so harshly. We ignore him. We don't, we, we, often, sadly, perhaps many of us don't read the Bible as we should. And we have offended him. And we must seek forgiveness. And we must realise we're in danger of punishment, of being locked up, not just in jail like Judas realises his sin but in hell itself but Joseph is so kind and good he tells them come near to me and he shows them kindness he says oh, I am Joseph to all his brothers come near me don't be afraid about what's happened don't be angry with yourselves he says that he's willing he forgives them and he's so kind and they hug him and they welcome him Joseph and Joseph welcomes them. They are shocked. It's Joseph and they are amazed and scared. But Joseph is so kind and forgiving. He says that God sent him here. Though Judah did send him here, God used it to help them provide corn and keep them alive and speak to all the Egyptians about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what the, how wonderful that story is of how Judah was transformed from selling Joseph to then protecting Benjamin. And I wonder, have you thought about this story? What does it indicate? Are we truly sorry for the sins we've done? If we ask the Lord to God to transform our hearts? You see, Joseph in many ways was a stern man that they were afraid of until he showed himself to them. We must ask God to show himself to us Though he appears to be strict and casting people into hell, he is so loving if we ask him. And when he shows himself to us, he's so good. You know, there are many things. These pyramids have lasted forever. But one day, they haven't lasted forever, but they have seemed to have lasted forever. But one day, they will be gone. They have lasted for so long, it seems forever. But one day, it will be gone. And they're... It's an opportunity to be reunited with God in heaven and see these people like Joseph in heaven. But the most important thing is to see our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who went to the cross and died for us and was so kind and loving even though we were his enemies. He took away our sin for all those who trust in him, including me. And I want to ask him, you, ask you, has he taken away your sin? Have you asked him? Have you come back to God like Judah came back to Joseph? though he had been so harsh to him. Are we friends with God? I hope 
This week you'll be kind to your friends, perhaps the brothers and sisters you live with, perhaps those who even you might not want to love as much. You're, perhaps you have stepbrothers and stepsisters, and you should be kind like Joseph was to Judah, and showed great love and kindness, and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to be your saviour. Let's pray together. Lord God, our loving Heavenly Father, O oh Lord God, we realise that we have not done the things we should have done in thy word. O oh Lord, we have been so unkind to our brothers and sisters and to our friends at school, but most importantly, we have been unkind, O oh Lord, to you. O oh Lord, truly forgive us our sins, wash us clean from the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope to all see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us. The life of Joseph is so exciting and continues. He wasn't buried in a pyramid. And I'll leave that story for another time. Thank you, David, for bringing the story to us this week. Wow, what a shock Joseph brothers must have had when they eventually found out that the leader of Egypt was Joseph. What a relief it must have been for Joseph that his brothers had passed the test and that they were really, truly sorry for the things that they had done. How happy they must have all been as they embraced and hugged one another. Well, you know, in the Bible, the Bible tells us that there is joy in heaven. There's happiness, there's embracing, there's joy over one sinner that repenteth. So children, I want to ask you again, just before we come to our memory verse, are you ready to seek forgiveness? Are you ready to ask Jesus to forgive you? Because that's why each week we talk about Jesus every week, because we want you to understand that you've done things wrong. We've done things wrong. We still do things wrong. But one thing we're sure of, is that if we ask God to forgive us, if we seek forgiveness, if we ask Jesus to be our saviour, that there is joy in heaven and that one day we'll be able to go to heaven and be with Jesus and perhaps even meet Joseph and hear his side of the story and see the wonder of the good news of the gospel. So children, let's get ready for our memory verse. I hope you've got your Bibles because we're going to do a sword drill to find the verse that we're going to learn. Children, I hope you've got your swords ready for the sword drill. And I don't think you will need 30 seconds to find this week's memory verse. And once the time is up, we'll go straight into the memory verse with Henry. So are you ready, children? The clock starts now. Okay, I hope you've you found Luke chapter 6. Hello children and welcome to the memory verse uh, of today's Sunday school. And today we are looking at this verse. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Well, there are three words that are really important to understand this verse, and that is judge, condemn and forgive. And this verse is telling us, first and foremost, to treat others as we would ourselves like to be treated. And the first two words that we use are negatives. The verse is telling us and God is telling us not to judge and, to, and not to point the finger at others and proclaim them as guilty. But it tells us in the third word to be forgiving which is a positive thing we should be forgiving of those pe of those things that people have done to us if they are bad so the verse is telling us not to be judgmental and not to condemn people which is to point the finger at people but to be forgiving and why is this important well if you look at what god has done for us um, and if you're a real christian a true christian 
um, you will know that Christ has forgiven you of all your many sins. And when we look at just the amount of sins that we have committed each and every day, we have absolutely no right to point the finger at anyone else because we are very guilty of all those sins. So you see, we should treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves. And you can see that in Joseph's life, can't, can't you? You see, his uh, brothers sold him into slavery. They tra- treated him uh, very badly, but Joseph didn't point the finger or judge them. No, he was loving in kind and forgiving, wasn't he? He forgave them of all their sins. Um, and we have learnt about that in the Sunday school. And this is exactly what Christ has done uh, for his people. He has seen that they are guilty and they have committed sins against him, but he has forgiven them through Christ and the cross. And so we should look to Christ for forgiveness and be forgiving ourselves. So let's learn this memory verse and try and put it into action to be forgiving and not judgmental in our lives. So I'll hand over to Emily who will go through the memory verse now. Let's learn the memory verse then, children. So we'll read it through first. So, judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Do you think we can do this without some of the tricky words? Let's have a go. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. We're going to get rid of some more of the important words now. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Are we keeping up with this children? Do you think we can take away some more? A bit easier this time. We've just taken away some of the chapter. So judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. I hope we're getting the hang of it now. Here we go. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Do we think we can do this? I reckon you can. Let's have a go. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Now I hope you'll remember this verse this week children and remember to be loving and forgiving to those around you and not to condemn and to judge as we're often tempted to do. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed Sunday School this week and we'll finish Sunday School by singing this through twice. I hope you can remember the actions. So high, that's right, reach to the top of the sky. So low, that's right, perhaps you can bend down and and put your hands on the floor. And then so wide, you need to stretch out as far as you can. Because that's a picture of how Jesus' love is wonderful to us. So we'll sing this through twice and then we'll close Sunday School in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee once again for another opportunity to learn more about You. Lord, we thank You for the story of Joseph. We thank You for the pictures of Christ. We thank You that You sent Your Son to die on the cross, 
that we can be forgiven. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us of our every sin. And Lord, as we go back to school tomorrow, we pray that you would be with us, help us to do our lessons well. Lord, we ask these things in thy precious name. Amen.